With this photograph, I want to explore how we can create a bit of a vintage effect. This is a portrait of one of my good friends, Mike, and we're out at the Channel Islands in Santa Barbara, California, and it's the middle of the day, so the light is really harsh. Yet what I want to do is add a bit more dimension to this. I want to add some depth. I want to make this look a little bit more old rather than quite so snapshotty. One of the first things that I want to do is work on the overall exposure here, and I want to bring out some of my shadows and also bring down some of the highlights. To do that, we'll start off by clicking in our background layer. I should also point out there are a couple of other layers that we'll be referring to in a few minutes. Okay, well, let's copy the background layer by pressing Command or Control J. We'll name this Shadow and Highlights. Here, all that we're interested in doing is going to Image, and then Adjustments, and Shadows and Highlights. And what I want to do is I want to bring up my shadow detail. So I'm going to increase these sliders. I'm going to do so with still some contrast so I have more detail in there. Now, eventually, I'll be converting this image to black and white. So I'm not too concerned about the color. I'm more interested in the overall contrast and how that looks. Here's the before and then after. All right, well, let's work on the highlights as well. We're going to bring those down. And as we bring these down, we can just start to see that background dip down a bit. There's before and then now after. OK, well, let's click OK here in order to apply that. Next thing I want to do is work on the tone here on the face. This is just way, way too bright. To darken that up, I'll click on my adjustment layer icon, and I'll choose Curves. I'm going to try out a blending mode of Multiply. Multiply does a great job at just bringing detail down. And then I'll go ahead and bring down my white point and also bring down this curve here. Next, invert this layer by pressing Command or Control-I. What we want to do next is grab our brush. With our brush tool, we're going to select white. We want a nice soft edge brush, no hardness there, pretty small. And we can go ahead and paint this in with something less than 100% opacity. We're just going to start to darken up this area. Now, it's giving this weird discoloration, but that doesn't matter because this will then eventually be converted to black and white. Make my brush a little smaller and just paint a little bit more into this area here. OK, well, let's soften up those edges by going to masks and then feathering that out just to diffuse the way that that darkening effect is applied to the image. Well, now that we've equalized the tone, let's convert to black and white. Here, we'll go ahead and click on our adjustment layer icon and choose black and white. All right, well, now that we've done that, some of those tonal adjustments, which look so strange, are really kind of irrelevant. Here's that before and after on the face there and also the before and after on the overall exposure and tone. Now the only thing I want to do here is go back to my curves adjustment, grab my brush tool, and I'll lower the opacity way down here. I'm going to paint with white just to darken up a few other areas while I'm at it. I'm going to go ahead and darken up this side of the arm there, the knees, and also this highlight over here on this side as well. All right, well, again, just some subtle little darkening, but it's nice to have the flexibility in changing the overall tonal structure of the image. All right, well, now that we've done this, I'm ready to add some contrast, and I really want to increase the contrast significantly. So we'll click in our top layer, and we'll create a curves adjustment. Here we'll click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. So at this point, I'm going to click and drag down, darkening this up, and then click and drag up, brightening the overall image bringing back some contrast. And what's interesting is I'm able to add this contrast only because I corrected the image here. This equalized things a bit, so I could then add some more contrast up top over here. OK, well, now that I see my contrast, I'm going to go to Shadow and Highlights and just lower that there just a bit, remove some of that, and also perhaps work on this layer a little bit more, just lowering some of that. I don't need quite so much. And now I have a pretty good starting point for this vintage effect. I have a nice black and white photograph. Let's evaluate. Here's the before, and then now the after. And we accomplished this step by using shadow and highlights, curves, and some masking, a black and white adjustment layer, and then finally one more curves layer to create some contrast. All right, well, I think this is a pretty good start. Yet let's continue to make this image even better, and we'll pick this up right here in the next movie.